I think the real masculinity is when you're alone. And when you look yourself in the mirror. Now you have to be sensitive. You have to. I never got all of these lessons growing up. I think I called myself. I, I had to hold myself back and say, okay, hold on. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Timulain Dube. Welcome to the 2023 gold the magazine uh panel discussion for men um i have a great group of men around me today so that we can have a you know a, a conversation about healthy masculinity in our communities and our young men to see how we can actually redefine it from what we've learned as men to sort of like paint the the way for our future men and our future boys that are coming in and i think that's the the objective of the conversation that we're having today gents that um, how do we then prepare these young men to have sort of like a healthy relationship with their community, a healthy relationship with their brothers, with their friends, with their loved ones, with their significant others. Like now we see a lot of gun violence, we see a lot of violence towards like men among men, boys up um, to boys as well. Um, we see a lot of violence with violence that actually is aimed at women. So how do we then correct that? from today onwards, how do we then create this healthy masculinity that boys and men are supposed to have? And I think that's what is important with this conversation today. I think we should put that in the back of our mind, even though we might touch on uh, a few other things that might be um, a bit personal to us that might have to, you know, put us back where we um, got our childhood traumas and made us the men that we are today. But let's keep that in mind and say, I went through this and this is how you can get through it. Um, so I would like to you guys to sort of like, from that side to introduce yourselves and then I think we can then start the conversation from there. All right. Um, thanks a lot. Um, my name is Namela. Uh, I'm a father to an 18 year old daughter. Um, so I've had a, <laughs> a, a, a good share of my experience with, uh, with how how to groom a young person um, in this world that we're in. You know, it's definitely not the same as where we were when we grew up. Um, it's more challenging. Yes, sir. So, yeah. And uh, I hope I'll be able to share a bit of what I've experienced and things I feel I could have done better. Awesome. So, um, I'm Gabriello. Um, I have a... I have a whole tribe. I've got a, I've got one turning thirteen in a couple of uh, weeks. Yeah. Uh, my daughter's turning eleven next week, and my youngest one just turned five a couple of months ago. So, oh, cool. I've got a, I've got a whole tribe. Um, I'm very excited about today's conversation Not as well. Uh, Kumonzo, I'm a father of two. I've got a ten-year-old yeah. who is like a prima donna teenager son, and I've got a five-year-old who's also like a teenager. So I think my kids are beyond their years yes. currently, mm. and I'm a godfather to all. Right. So I'm that uncle <laughs> that has taken part, you know, you know, the, uh, has, who's been like a father where there is no father, father figure there. Yeah. That's actually quite an important role, actually. I don't think a lot of men think about the roles that they play in the lives of, you know, the kids that come in within the family. Because mm. obviously you're that uncle, you're that brother, yeah. you're that father and sometimes we don't even carry ourselves in a way that actually examples you know healthy men so to say but i think the question to um start us off will be like how do we then define masculinity because it might be different to all of us you know um i think for me masculinity talks about being brave and protecting your family more like you know how in a pride of lions, the one with the mane is the one who gets to fight mm. and protect the home. And that's about it. I think for me, that's where it ends and it doesn't ex overextend itself anywhere else. But like, I'd, maybe let's say, just ask you guys, what do you think masculinity is? I'm being, maybe let me start this side. Uh, uncle. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, typically for me, masculinity, it means that you need to be strong, both physically and mentally. Mm -hmm. Uh, lead by example, 
um, show show character when you it's it least expected of you, uh, and a level of consistency for me uh, shows a great deal of of masculinity. Unlike a uh, be strong, you know, yeah. a Fred Flintstone type of a vibe. <laughs> yeah, but I think we've evolved from that type of masculinity where there is there's also an element that we can be vulnerable. Yeah. But in growing in the vulnerability, not to stay being vulnerable. Okay. Yeah. Um I think it's a it's a tricky question because like when you when you say masculinity, I mean, is it the same in the household as it is among your friends? Is it the same as you know, in, in the work environment? So I think there's different um, you know, sections in your life where you have to apply masculinity and I I, I don't think you can encompass it by simply saying it's a, you know, an action. I see that. But okay. I do lean to what you were saying. I, I generally feel if you're displaying masculinity, it's usually when you're being protective mm. or taking care. I think responsibility comes hand in hand with uh, masculinity. Masculinity. Okay. Navala, what do you think? Look, I mean, when, when I was growing up, masculinity spoke to what you alluded to earlier. You know, being the strong one. Um, I remember my sisters when they they had like a, a, a snake in the house, yeah. and they called me, Papa Namela, <laughs> please come. You know, and I mean, that's what is expected of you as a man, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I got to learn growing up that it's it's a balance of what we perceive as feminine mm. and masculine. Mm. That's when you are seen as masculine, healthy masculine. So for me, it's just being able to show up. Yeah. Show up however you are required to show up. Okay. If your if you if your children want you to 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 give that sensitive side, you need to show up. Don't be no, don't you you must not cry. Yeah. You must be able and they see it from you to say it's okay to cry, it's okay to 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 fall and get up again. Mm. You understand? And I think for me that's what it is. Just having that right balance, be able to be strong and also still be vulnerable, like mm. you said, mm. vulnerable f when you are required. Yeah. But I think I I, I probably like Governor's definition of it is that. It's not one thing. Mm -hmm. It's almost like different hats that we need to put on Correct. every single time. And I think I liked your question of like masculinity where? Fine, masculinity in the home might be you're the one that they call to get the lizard mm. or to get the snake out of the house. That's good masculinity to be able to show up and say, okay, I'll protect you guys using my body and using my mind and whatnot. The masculinity that comes out or that actually emanates from outside of the yard is that where the problem is? Um, potentially, but my question then would be, when defining masculinity, mm. is it something that you only display in certain instances? So for example, in the workspace, yeah. is there space for me to be masculine? My personal sort of like viewpoint is that obviously at work, I'm able to show my mas masculinity by at a, in a meeting, speaking over somebody who's, who's a woman or making an executive decision without um, consulting anybody in my group or in my team. That is sort of like the masculinity that you then transfer from home and you bring it into the workplace. Or maybe you take it from home and you bring it into your relationship. Mm -hmm. As men, do we know when to sort of like, okay, cool, cut. I need to put on this green hat here and become masculine in this way. And I don't think that. Do we Do we divide our manlyhood into the duties that we actually come across? No. Nah. I don't think I do. I think I get it wrong. Mm. Most times, um, in retrospect, I'll say, ah, I should have done that. But mm. to be fair, I don't know when to turn it on and when to turn it off. Okay. So hence why I, 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 I struggle with the, what is the definition? Because in the household, okay, you're the leader or quote unquote leader. Yeah. Mm. Um, but in the workspace, you might find yourself in a position where maybe you have to directly answer to a woman. Mm. Um, I, I've only worked for women managers. I've never really struggled because it's in the workspace. Mm. But then what, what would you constitute as being masculine in the workspace? What, how do we define that? Can we define that? Or is it more 
something we only use in our personal lives? Is there yeah. a space for it in corporate? Yeah. Is it more something you reserve for your home? Is it something you reserve um, only to express when you're in with your friends? Especially with um, you know modern society where it does feel like there's a little bit of a, a witch hunt on being a man's yes. man. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah. now you have to be sensitive. You have to. Mm -hmm. I never got all of these lessons growing up. True. The lessons I got up around being masculinity, one of the first lessons is boys don't cry. You know, mm. I'm teaching my son to cry now, but mm. well, I think he's got that by himself. But yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> that was one of the first things I learned at about four or five or six years old that yeah. you know, it's not okay to cry. And when you now are expected to teach a young man um, the ways of the world, how do you teach them when we are taught that the tools that we currently have are incorrect, big yeah. toxic? Yeah. So does that mean I'm toxic? Well, I mean, Kumazo, maybe I'll be yeah, well, directed towards you since you are... So so for me, let's let's just take a step back. We're Africans, first and foremost. As, and as a man, we are head of the house. We need to lead, you know, and, and not show emotion and, and just... We need to be man. You can just be thick as steel. But with the way things have evolved over the years, with influences from Western world... Um, we've started to change the narrative of how we perceive being a man. And for me, it's an individual journey. We can't put it into a bracket. We can have elements of attributes that a, a man should or could have in order to succeed, yeah. but doesn't mean that if you don't meet the status quo, you are not a man. Yeah. You don't qualify as being a man. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at right now, we are men, women, them, they, everything is evolving. And it becomes tricky when you have like my son, I, my firstborn is a boy, mm. where you have to have those conversations where he would ask her, why is that guy kissing that guy? Mm. And, and you're like, mm, uh, chief, ask your mom, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but you, 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 I would ask myself a question. If, yeah. if, if I had to see my brother kissing another brother, how would I react to it? And it's just, I think it's more about having the conversations. And the more we have the conversations that we can unpack things, mm. the more we can understand the current way of thinking. Lamela, um, <laughs> with, 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 with the things that we've said, mm. um, obviously you've been in, or you've been a father longer than all of us. I, I guess maybe it's a reflective question. When did you see your masculinity show up in parenting? Where did you see it, you know, show up in, I suppose, the relationships that, you, that you've had with the people around you? We said masculinity is protection. When your child does something or somebody says something about your child, how did that show up in you? With, with time, I, I grew to understand that masculinity is not necessarily the, you know, focus, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I refrain from actually talking masculinity and femininity right? mm -hmm. it's more for me um how do you want me to show up for you you know the, the like your question when when you know something happens at school for instance and my daughter's like this and this happened mm -hmm. your first reaction is who is this let me sort them out mm -hmm. right yeah. mm -hmm. but we need to stop and ask uh, and be able to have a conversation with your child mm -hmm. to say what happened what do, you, what do you need me to do for you in this instance? Because sometimes you go and try and sort out the parent to the child or the teacher, mm. and that's not what she wants. And she's like, dad shouldn't have died. I mean, I've had recently a situation like that. And I was like, she's like, there's the teacher. And I'm like, stop in the car, put the hazards on. Mm. She's like, dad, no, don't do that. I'll sort it out. Yeah. Right? And we started talking about it afterwards to say, you know, mm -hmm. all she needed from me is an ear to listen on what happened and to say, how can I better handle that situation with that person? Mm -hmm. And that speaks to empowering. And that for me is more important than being the tough guy I'm going to sort. You understand what I'm I have a, I have a question. Um, as somebody that's, uh, you know, dealt with, with teenage children and um, I have teenage children who are about to enter my household. Um, 
when when do you let go and stop being the authoritarian uh, yeah the 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 the, the pair always chasing pick this do this do that mm. when do you let them become their own person and how how do you give that person space because literally this is the, a human being whose butt you had to wipe at some point you took them out to use the toilet they're still not using it correctly <laughs> and now you're supposed to <laughs> give them their own space or yeah. what do you do do you step back do you let them be their own person when do you stop guiding when do you guide that that's where i'm the next step i'm going to and i'm worried that i might not give them enough space to mm. be themselves and i might carry on dictating which is what they need at, uh, you know, the phases between, you know, five and uh, 12, but now they're becoming their own people and I'm not sure if I know how to give them that space. So basically you're asking, when do you stop painting? <laughs> and then yeah. put up the painting on the wall and just say, I'm done. For me, that never stops, mm. right? But it's the how that's very important. I think when they're still young, you tell them, pick that up, do this, do that. Yeah without explaining. But as time goes, you start going further into the conversations. I grew up where I was just told, do this and do that, right? And you can't do that with, you know, sometimes you're like, but why? And you couldn't say that yeah. because you, that's a sign of disrespect. Why did you make yeah, it the back of your that. head, boss? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But I'm now, shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you know that boomerang <laughs> and I'm a So, the, so, um, I got to understand. I, I think sometimes you, you reflect on your childhood. You talked about childhood yeah. traumas. Yeah. You, you reflect at your, your childhood and be on some, with how I grew up, I would have loved it if this and that happened. I would have loved it if there was more explanation about this because mm. I don't really get why this is not feasible, you know? Mm. So I, 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 I think I called myself, I, I had to hold myself back and say, okay, hold on. You know, you look at your your child's reaction when you say something. Yeah, they're like, oh, it's like, dad does not understand. Not yeah, you know. Um, but then you you then go back and say, okay, let's sit down. Do you understand why this is happening? And that's where you need to explain so that they don't make their own decisions, because if they make their own decisions about what you just said it will determine whether they'll stop doing what you then said to them to stop doing or continue doing something that you said they should continue doing mm -hmm. because they do it with understand. Yeah. Once there's understanding, you're able to then put that painting on the wall and let it. Do you mind if I chip in? Uh, what I've seen is the letting go or giving them the freedom to without guidelines mm -hmm. comes an issue. So you give them the framework in terms of this is right, this is wrong, and this is how people will react. Not to say what everybody reacts that way, but this is generally how people react. Then you can, if you want to, you know, turn the envelope the other way, go ahead. But if you get bent, you mustn't get bent again. Learn from that experience and then yeah. do it again. My kids challenge me every day, Chile. Yeah. Every single day. My son is like a teenager. He's 10. Yeah. I make... I, I don't think it's a mistake, but it was an eye opener. Mm. But but on my phone, I allowed WhatsApp on his phone. With WhatsApp on his phone, he gets exposed to other things that I am not in control of. And I think the biggest thing is the peer pressure or to wanna be like everybody else. Mm. So I mean, I'll take Kabel for an example. My son might love Kabel because Kabel is the chill dad. He he lets you jump on the sofa because you're a child. You know, he lets you start the cars, mm. you know, and then I'm, I be, I'm becoming Sorry. like the disciplinarian, but I'm not. I'm saying there are rules mm. that we need to abide by. We need to educate our kids on the decisions that they make and that every reaction, that, I mean, every action, there is, there is a reaction, be it positive. For me, Libile is not positive or negative. There's an experience out of it. Mm. So whether it's a good experience or a bad experience, it's how you take it. If we go back to what 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 we how the conversation started, mm. um, at the end of it, we are discussing masculinity, mm. not getting to yeah. what the crux of it is. We are saying that don't be an individual when you're a man. This is what you must be 
instead of being cavalo, we must be masculine first and then cavalo after. I think it can't be like maybe they, they switch it around and say be cavalo first, and when there's when there's when there's a need for masculinity to come up, but then 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 it happens. But but why why is there a need? This is where you know for me personally the conversation I I get confused. I mean, but I almost feel like we in a position as men where uh, it's almost like your uh, the old white man in a new space and you're just trying to be PC. My masculinity shouldn't be switched on or switched off. Mm. I'm just supposed to be allowed to be masculine. And if my masculinity is by one person perceived as toxic, mm. why should I then switch off my masculinity to then mm. accommodate someone else? But of course, I don't want to be the person who's uh, dumped as the toxic male. I'm also very proud of being a man, but mm. I feel like as men, we're almost in that space where white people find themselves in a space where they are just trying to make sure, you know, they don't they say anything they said, wrong, they don't get cancelled yeah. and... You know, people I, don't think they're they're horrible human beings. I I would put it like this. I think in 2023 and now, as men, we're looking for identity. True. Because everything else that we are has been given to us, mm. or we've been told how to behave and how to do all these things. When you get out of this yard and everything like that, as a man, you can come back at any time. You can do this, whatever, whatever. But You're given the freedom to do anything. You're not given. You're not given the rules. No, we're not. You just you're just jumping on the couch as you know what I'm saying with the cool uncle. Mm. And then when you come back and say, This is what I've learned, we call you toxic. When we actually didn't set you out with rules. Mm. And when you say, When should my masculinity be on or off? I suppose we don't know because we're always looking for that existence of like, okay, Shop, where do I fit in? Yeah. Because in a group of guys, even, mm. we all know we have a pecking order. True. Yeah, yeah. On a little ice boy. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. in a group of friends. Nala mama's boy. Nala mama's boy. Nala ola bare a o nkotume na 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 dima. If anybody comes for you, na na dima. And I wanted to ask Kore the masculinity that we have amongst men mm. when we with our friends is different to the masculinity that you portray at home. Correct. To the masculinity that you portray at work. At work. Yeah. To the masculinity that you portray even on public transport. Yeah. It's different. All of my thing, even your stature, yeah. your changes mm-hmm. at work, yeah. your masculinity is toned down because Honale, Honale yeah. How do you navigate that? When you're a young man, I don't know about kids now, but, you know, they can't really put hands on each other, but mm. it was all about how physically dominant could you be? What kind of girls do you attract? Yeah. You girls like you. And then the older you get, it's what physical assets you what what car does your parents have? When do they make what can you do? What clothes do they um, mm. uh, allow you to, to to wear? It's almost two different games where there's there, there's the young man's side where it's all about physical mm. um how you look, how you're accepted and so forth. And then there's the grown man side where it's more about your achievements mm-hmm. and what you can provide. Mm. For your immediate circle, or anybody that uh, you know uh, chooses to keep your company. Mamela, I see you nodding. If we can teach teach our kids to be able to express themselves in any way they want to express themselves, that's key because you get to get to into their minds and where they are emotionally, right? I think for me that is the f- the foundation of it, being able to teach them to express themselves and. In terms of switching on and off, honestly, I'm probably doing it, but I don't notice it. Mm. I think it goes with growing up. Mm. Um, one thing that I've seen fathers do lately, we talked about friends. You have a friend who is, he's, he's, he's a physical specimen. He's about um, dedication to gym, you know, but then you're not focusing on the whole gym thing, but you know, they're very focused when it comes to certain, you bring those people close to your boy, right? So it becomes a community of men with specific talents. And once you you give them that, they're understanding why these people are around them. As soon as um, there is a certain issue that they have, and you shouldn't feel bad that the child didn't come to me to talk about mm. this mm. because you have given them the blueprint to say, 
these are the people for all the different pillars in your life. So if you need help with that, this is a person to speak to because you know that you trust that person with your life. I want to like segue from what you said yeah. to something that you said, right? Mm. Um, right now, you know, the world is very expressive. Mm. Everybody can say today I am, you know, um, mm. a woman or a man or, you know, a plant, a tree. Yeah. That freedom can men piggyback on it and say, this is the type of man I am. I'm not physical. Uh, I don't fight. If you come to my house and rob me, I'll give you everything. Mm. I'm not masculine at all. Again, when you say masculine, mm. sometimes the masculine thing to do is not to fight. Okay, maybe, maybe let me put it like this. Okay. The thing is that with men, most of the time, it's all about our pride. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. If you can't defend it, then you're not a man. But that's why I'm saying, you know, there's, there's the physical shift. Like you were saying earlier, mm. uh, for example, let's say your, your, your mate, your gym friend, more likely than not, when you guys were teen teenagers, he yeah. would have been the guy bullying you. the softest. No, bullying you in the friendship. Let's say he had the physical attribute. Mm -hmm. You know, he punch you around and grab your head. But now that we're adult men, mm -hmm. you know, he's not going to be vice gripping you. So, like, the, the conversation changes. The same guy that could have bullied you when you were 17, today you can tell him where to get off. Because of those, what, who you are as a man and what you achieve. Okay. So, I mean, I think... When we say a man's man, we have to, we have to really look at what we're saying. We, the, a man's man is no longer the, the guy that lights uh, a box of matches for Fulpi's bare chest. And, <laughs> you know, that's that, that very 1980 yeah. idea of what a man is who smokes camel. And yeah. that, <laughs> that, that's, that's not seen as a, as a man. Not seen as a, yeah. We don't have a definition of what a man is anymore mm -hmm. because everything you've been taught about manhood is now, well, not everything, but the vast majority is defined as toxic. As toxic. And none of us want to be dubbed as the toxic. But, okay. Question, who says we're toxic? Is it so guys? But we, I don't think as men we say we're toxic. No, we, we don't say... It's oh, coming from another side. We can't really speak about their perception of us. Because it's from the outside, I guess. You know what? The reason why I'm asking that question is and excuse me that I'm chewing, and I'm, and I'm asking this question is, we pay too much attention on what people think. Mm. If, we, if we listen to every Tom, Dick, and Harry, mm. we are stuck. You're not gonna go anywhere. Hence I said, you, you need building blocks, you need rules, you need structure mm -hmm. in your life. Mm. I think the real masculinity is when you are alone. And when you look yourself in the mirror and you see what you see, not what people think of you. Mm. I mean, I was a head boy. So I, there's a certain standards that were set for me before, before, before I chose it. Mm. I had to date a certain type of girl. Yeah. I had to take a certain type of career. You know what I mean? I mean, I discovered myself third year, almost done, finished life. I don't want to do this. But whose money did you waste? <laughs> Your dad's money. So my dad said, I'll go work. And I worked. And from there, then I rediscovered myself. What you said, uh, a man's... Uh, worth is this network. Mm -hmm. So the people that you surround yourself with actually determine the type of person you are. So if you want your kids to have the right structure, you must build it now. Mm -hmm. Najent, I'm not gonna lie. My son, when he's 18, and I'm gonna take the wife and we're gonna go. Then I'm gonna leave him in the house. What? Caucasian house. <laughs> 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 Okay, yeah. We spoke about expression and, and a child speaking to you and being free. Mm. If an Ali made it, has not budget and everything is available at home, mm. why not allow him? You must make his girlfriend in like the rest no. of the world. Yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, I don't like, I, I don't, yeah, no, no, but okay, okay, okay. But like before, before, sorry to yeah. sort of like catch you there. And mm. I agree with you, mm. right? In the sense that we need to adjust the culture. Right? In the sense that where not when you were sneaking in your maid at three or got four and then before listen maybe you sneak in Yeah. We can't do that. And now the thing is like because now a lot of things gets gets hidden from you as a parent. Now you can't even pick up 
Mutawa Joel. Now you can't even pick up Hori. Um, you know what I'm saying? The relationship that they're in is toxic. Tomorrow your, your child shows up dead and you're like, I didn't know. Mm. The reason I would never uh, do that is because I have a daughter as a... Yeah. If I'm going to allow that for my boys, it means that to allow that for my daughter. Yes. So now, whose daughter is going to be going at the end of sending him to go sleep over in a boy's house? You my know. daughter. Well, I mean, you can mind as well, because I... Here's what I think, yeah, right? Uh, oh, oh, here's, here's what I'm saying. My daughter's... Nah. Mm. And and with, with, with the violence that's going on right now, mm. I want to meet every single boyfriend. Um, I want to raise my kids to be responsible enough to manage that. Because but when don't... you start micromanaging who they dating, mm-hmm. where they're going, who their friends are, no, no, no. That's when no, 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 no. Barry I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not micromanaging who they date. Yeah. I want to know who they are dating. Oh, mums. Oh, she's on golf. I would die at all. Check. I'll check. I'll check. I'm coming here. Okay. As long as I know how to cover low, okay. You know what I'm saying? His parents and everything like that. So I worry most of the time is that kids are showing up dead. That's why I use the most general cover. Cover was trigger him. Or cover was going through his own traumas and everything like that. Mm. And I'm not able to pick that up because I'm going to hug. As I hug. As I hug. On the cover. Because you're hiding it. Because my dad doesn't want me to date. Tomorrow, when when it's when it when it's a problem, then you ask yourself, where did I go wrong? Because now we're taking, let's say maybe things from the past, or we're parenting the way that our parents did. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. Namela, what do you what do you think? Because you you uh, as uh, as, again. as a father yeah. to a daughter, mm. <laughs> I'm listening to you. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, ain't no way. Never. 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 So. <laughs> This is the thing, right? I'm open enough with my daughter to talk about everything. Well, I hope. Yeah. Right? But she's open to talk to me about anything. She'll be able to say that this is what's going on. The one thing that COVID has done for me, so amazing, that after COVID, working from home, I'm able to take my daughter to school and back. The conversations we have are more profound than when we out somewhere with public, like in that car, we just, mm. just ourselves and we mm. talk, right? I'm not going to say kids shouldn't date or whatever, but for me, we've had the discussions about what is it, what's important for you right now. Right now. Mm. And we talk about it. If you feel you're ready for something, let's talk about it. Mm. Why do you think you're ready for this? And if we're doing that, let's do it right. Mm. The sneaking around, that's where things go wrong. That's where, how do they say it? That's where the danger is. Yeah. Right? <laughs> because you'll never know if the guy has issues and ends up the sweeping. Girl. So, the girl. Wait, just, sorry to cut you off. Let's say, right. The reason why I don't want to know is sometimes the stresses that you need to not bring into your life. Now you know your kid <laughs> is hanging around this 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 young man who, who's been a little cool way. Mm-hmm. When are you now trying to convince your little girl that this boy that she's madly in love with because it's puppy love and she thinks they're going to get married or whatever. <laughs> right off into the dust room to ride or die. Sunset <laughs> or the sunset, <laughs> yeah. Money and class. He too far. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, so now you have all this information about your child, right? And then what do you do? Are you going to stop this? Are you going to hold this help from going out with this person? They, I, you can't. No. At a certain point, you need to have raised your child to be smart enough Okay. And able to negotiate That's things like you trust. Mm. So they need to be able to plan properly to sneak somebody into the house no. and sneak this person out without you finding out so that mm. they can do things in their life. So you're teaching them to be cunning. I don't want to know all of my kids' little boyfriends and go- I want to know the one you're married, the one you've looked and you've said, you know what, I'm analyzed, not my dad. Yeah. I'm seeing cooking and photo and I want this person. And I'm saying this person is good enough and it's like that. Okay, cool. So it's, it's almost like you're saying this is where you can relinquish power. That's say you've done yeah. enough to yeah. prepare them for, for the yeah. world. Now they're micromanaging their friends. That's a headache. Mm. Now every little 17-year-old that walks into your house, you need to know mm-hmm. his dad, his mom, well, what's wrong with this one? This one's got a drug, what not? And then you are trying to influence your child to have the kind of friends you want, but you mm-hmm. don't understand. What if your kid has this friend that is a complete mess. 
but your kid is helping this this boy or this girl. They teach them different things. And yeah. your kid is learning to be streetwise off of this kid without having to experience all the things that guy went through. Mm. So I would rather have my kids in a position where when they make the decisions, yeah. they know what they're doing. Not that every time they make a mistake, oh my God, daddy's going to come wipe it. Or daddy made sure I don't have the bad friends so I didn't get into trouble. They must get into their own trouble and figure out how to get out of it. <laughs>